So to introduce our speaker, um, thank you for being here, Ashley. Ashley uh, Balai is a mother, author, and artist born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. She developed a love for art and literature from her father, who was both a painter and songwriter. Throughout her childhood, she was encouraged to pursue creative outlets such as fine art classes, creative writing, sewing, design, and music lessons. For Ashley, art became an integral part of her life as she began to use different mediums for self-expression and therapeutic purposes. As she grew older, she began to realize the impact that both art and writing can have on a person after encountering works that touched her and helped her gain new perspectives. Understanding that art can relay powerful messages, heal, push boundaries, and start conversations was a catalyst for Ashley to turn her creativity into a business. Please help me give a warm uh, virtual welcome to Ashley Belay. Hi, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm very excited to be here with you all today on the Take 30 webinar. Again, my name is Ashley Belay, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. That was fantastic. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just come on here and speak with you guys about the book that I wrote, Little Miss Mismatch, and how it is currently being used in the educational system to talk about kindness, anti-bullying, inclusion, friendship, and self-expression. So first, I'll start off with just a little bit of background on myself. I am an artist, author, illustrator, and mom to a very inquisitive funny and kind-hearted three-year-old little girl, Bella, who is actually the inspiration as a character for my children's book. So I was born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. And like earlier mentioned, my father uh, was very into the arts. He was a musician, played guitar, sang, wrote music, and also really sparked my interest in painting as he would always be working on some kind of watercolor artwork around the house. I can remember at a very young age sitting watching him mix colors and talking to me about color theory when I was really little. So when my parents divorced, I was about eight years old and my wonderful mom had the smart idea to put me into art therapy classes. And this is what really solidified my passion and love for creating art because I saw how it could be used as therapy. Using art as a healing modality proved to be so beneficial for me to the point that even still to this day, I continue to use it for those purposes. Eventually, my passion and hobby started turning into a small business. I started having people reach out to me to do commissions here and there, including murals and portraits, abstract pieces. But at the time, my style was kind of just all over the place. Throughout my creative career, I've also kept a pocket journal that eventually turned into the notes section on my smartphone when we went from the memorable flip phones to a little bit more high tech ones. So I would do creative writing for no other purpose than my own enjoyment or to get thoughts out of my head. Another way to deal with things, whatever was going on, going on with me at the time or other times it was just inspired writing. Um, so there was a moment during the pandemic when we all had a lot of time on our hands that I just had this sort of lightning bolt of creativity. And I started writing this little rhyme story about Little Miss Mismatched. And the primary theme of the story was to embrace your individuality, be authentic to who you are, and most importantly, welcome others' differences, which is a message that both the younger and older generations can always be reminded of. And it's something that I've always tried to be better at, to be as authentic to who I am as a person, even when it makes me uncomfortable. So I ended up reading the story to my husband just for fun. And he immediately responded, this should be a book. And I'm like, I just think about it for a second because I'm thinking, do I want to take on another creative project here? But I was like, you know what? let's do it. Let, let's be up for the challenge. So he and I collaborated together and um, have worked on bringing this book into fruition. And I had never written a book before. He had never written a book before, much less published a book on our own. 
But after discussing things, we decided to embark on the adventure of writing, illustrating, and self-publishing. And it's been a really fun and wonderful learning experience. And I, I, I did joke the other day that I could probably write a book on how to not write a book because we would take three steps forward and then sometimes two steps back, but would always just keep things moving. There are so many nuances with not just writing and editing and proofreading, but things like properly formatting the book and making sure the print looks nice on the finished product. Again, we learned a lot and now we know what not to do on the next one. So doing this book pushed me to learn how to do digital illustrations. I'd been accustomed to working with physical paper and inks and paints, but I knew that if I wanted the flexibility to make serious edits, I would need to do it on the computer. So long story short, I bought a tablet, looked up some YouTube tutorials and figured out how to recreate watercolor paintings on the computer, which was a really big game changer for me. So we decided to launch the book on December 7th of 2021, and it got off to a great start. Within the first few weeks, we ended up making it to the number one release in our category, and it stayed there for almost a full week. So that was very encouraging. So that's a little brief synopsis on myself. And now that I've given you a bit of background on me and how the book came about, I'd like to go ahead and take a moment to read the book to you, if I may. So this is Little Miss Mismatch. I'm going to try and get this all in frame here. So this is the intro. Cheers to the wild ones, the weird ones, the ones that break the mold, the ones who make others live more authentically, the ones who never apologize for being who they are, the ones who bravely step out of the box, the ones who blaze the way, the ones who inspire, the ones who make magic around them, the ones who live life so fully, savor every moment and know that all we have is now. Cheers to the lone wolf souls, the wanderers, the creatives, the unique spirits. Cheers to the beauty that our world needs to grow. It's your energy that paves the way for change, healing, acceptance, understanding, compassion, unity, and love. Cheers to you. Cheers to the wild ones. This book is dedicated to my daughter, Bella. Little Miss Mismatched would put on her clothes and nothing would match from her head to her toes. Stripes on bottom and polka dots on top, a red fuzzy hat and neon flip-flops. Every day she got dressed, her mother would say, you look fantastic, have a great day. But when Miss Mismatched went out to play, her friends would all laugh. You're so silly, they'd say. Little Miss Mismatch didn't blink an eye and simply replied, that's okay, with a sigh. Again, she dressed however she pleased, sparkles plaid and fringed to her knees. Some days she wore yellow with red glitter shoes, a purple lace hat and her pants made of blue. Little Miss Mismatch liked to dress fun. Sometimes she wore costumes with her hair in space buns. Other days it was faux fur made of purple and red with fuzzy cat ears on top of her head. With striped rain boots and hot pink stockings, she wore what she liked and there were no signs of stopping. One day her friend Jessie knocked on her door and had on an outfit Miss Mismatch adored. Jessie had donned her grandmother's pink hat, found her grandfather's tie that was printed with cats. She was wearing her mom's fancy gold shades and put a blue ribbon in both of her braids. Miss Mismatch, she exclaimed, I thought I would try to do something different and I think it's all right. You inspired me to do something fun and I think my outfit is quite the home run. Miss Mismatched and Jessie exchanged a high five, both of them having a sparkle in their eyes. 
More and more friends wanted to dress up. And before you knew it, it was the mismatched club. Her mom gently hugged her and patted her head, sat her down on the couch and quietly said, when you are yourself, just totally you, you inspire others to be themselves too. Not everyone is meant to be just alike. It's your uniqueness that shines like a light. Always be you, even when it's tough, because you and you alone are always enough. So that's the book. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed this process of creating this book and seeing what is going to come from it. And I kind of went in with really not a whole lot of expectations, but I was hopeful that it would be used in certain ways. And um, yeah, I had a, an elementary school here in Tennessee that actually reached out to me not too long ago regarding the book and how they were involving it in their Great Kindness Challenge Week. Um, every year, this particular school does a kindness challenge for a full week, and they really involve the students in conversations about how we can all be kind to one another, despite what differences we may have. So the guidance counselor reached out and informed me they were going to read the book and use Little Miss Mismatch as their mascot for the week. And they even had a mismatch day for the kids to all dress in mismatch clothes to help highlight being kind despite being different, different and embracing your creativity and self-expression. So I was really excited to hear they were incorporating the message of the book into their kindness week. I later heard back from the guidance counselor that the week had been a success and the kids not only enjoyed the book, but it sparked a lot of really important conversations about inclusion, differences, bullying, feeling excluded, all those things and how we can all just do better. They said that after that week, they had a surprise for me and wanted to come to the school to pick up the gift. And I went to the school and received this incredible box. And in this box is over 300 notes from the students about how the book has impacted them. And there's tons here. I'll read you just, just a few of them. I wish I could share all of them with you guys, but um, I... <laughs> Definitely went to my car and opened up the box and I may have been that person in the parking lot crying by myself in the driver's seat after reading some of these. It was very, very sweet and very touching. Um, I, here's one. I love your book so much. I think that it will really inspire others to be themselves and let them know that they don't have to change who they are for others. Um, your book was so good. I really liked it because it teaches you a life lesson and it also teaches you kind words and positivity. Um, I like your book because even if someone is being mean to you, it doesn't mean you should change. So yeah, that was very, very special that I received that. And also to see how the book was being utilized. And then from there, I actually had a few other schools reach out, um, to wanting to do something similar, not necessarily for a kindness week, but to incorporate the book in certain lessons to talk about bullying. Um, and you know, there, we, we all have this desire to want to fit in, right? We all want to feel like we have a place to belong to, a community to belong to. No one wants to feel like they're the odd person out or excluded from a group. And because of this, kids and even us adults sometimes dim our lights to try and conform to the crowd in order to feel accepted. And this is just really unfortunate because it truly is our differences that make us all so beautifully unique. I mean, I don't even want to try and think about a world where we're all exactly the same and be incredibly boring. There's so much pressure for kids to look, act, talk, be the average of their peers, but it's the ones who refuse to conform and the ones who are different either by choice or otherwise that are at risk of being bullied or simply just left out. So I created this book to be sort of an anthem for all those children who feel like maybe they don't yet have a space to fit into and to know that it's okay to be different. It's okay to not be like everyone else. And it's their uniqueness that makes them beautiful. That is what makes you who you are. And that should be embraced. It should be celebrated. A lot of the conversations that I have with my three-year-old daughter go something like, mom, what does impolite mean? Or mom, what does procrastinate mean? Mom, mom, mom. 
I had a dollar for every time I heard the word mom, I would have a lot of dollars, but um, so she'll occasionally hear me say a word and then ask me about the meaning. And I just have to like do my best to explain it. Um, and one of the conversations with her recently has actually been a lot about kindness. Um, unfortunately, we've had a few instances with her being bullied on the playground a few times, mainly being pushed or kids just not wanting to play with her. And trying to explain what kindness is to a three-year-old involves a lot of situational examples and asking her questions, saying, do you think this person is being kind or rude? And we arrived to the point of the conversation where she understood that kindness is a lot about how you make someone feel or how someone else makes you feel. And we've done our best to instill in her a kind heart, but also standing up for herself and being strong and finding that balance of strength without aggression and kindness without being taken advantage of can be very tricky even for us adults. That's why these conversations are so vital to have. I think it's also important to talk about the intention behind someone else's actions that may, may have made the child feel bad. Um, when Bella was being pushed on the playground, we first spoke about how it made her feel, validated her emotions, and then we spoke about the reason why someone may act a certain way. And I explained that sometimes children and adults don't know how to express themselves, and so sometimes they do things or say things that can be hurtful. Now, I want to shift gears for a moment and talk about some statistics that I got from the CDC website um, regarding suicide, which connects back to bullying. And unfortunately, suicide is a leading cause of death in the United States with close to 46,000 deaths in 2020. And there's one death about every 11 minutes. And the number of people who think about or attempt suicide is even higher. In 2020, an estimated 12.2 million American adults seriously thought about suicide, and 3.2 million planned a suicide attempt, and 1.2 million attempted suicide. Suicide affects all ages, and in 2020, suicide was among the top nine leading causes of death for people ages 10 to 64. And suicide was the second leading cause of death from people ages 10 to 14. Wow, and those statistics are staggering. Unfortunately, there is an epidemic of suicide that is going on in the country, and um, some of these can be attributed to bullying and feeling excluded and not feeling like you have a place to belong. So what can we do as educators, adults, and parents? Certainly having continued conversations and open dialogue is the most obvious option. And also destigmatizing conversations about mental health. I think that's very important as well. Creating a safe space for those who feel like they don't belong or those who are being bullied is key. Creating an environment of inclusion, even if it's a safe space with just one person, one educator, one peer, one adult can help alleviate some of that stress for a kid. So it is so vital for every child to feel like they have a place to belong, a place that is safe to be themselves, to be expressive, to be authentic to who they are, and a place where they can speak freely about whatever they may be going through. Little Miss Mismatch, the book, has already proven to be helpful in opening up these important conversations with kids about bullying, inclusion, disabilities, race, gender, peer pressure, kindness, and friendship. My hope for the future is to continue to spread this message of kindness by creating more content with conscious messages for kids and for adults. So we are planning on creating um, a series of books that are in line with Little Miss Mismatch that will all have very conscious content and will touch on maybe sensitive subjects, things that might be hard to just bring up in regular conversation, but it's a good catalyst to open up dialogue with kids and their peers to discuss these important topics. So I really hope you've enjoyed my webinar and I'd like to kind of open up now for any questions or comments that you all have. Anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and type them into the chat or you can um, put them in the Q&A box. But 
I did want to ask you some questions, Ashley. Um, how did your daughter react to hearing a story about herself? It's been an interesting process because during the creation of the book, um, she would watch me do the illustrations and she understood that this person looks a lot like her and I would use her as kind of my model. So she was very involved in even from the very beginning and helping choose some of the colors of the outfits and helping me decide on things. She said, mom, I don't like that on that picture. Okay, we'll change this. So she was, she was vocal in, um, participated in the process of creating the book. And so now she, she knows that that's, that's her on the cover. That's her in the pictures, but, um, yeah, she's, she's been very aware of it and, and involved through the process.